Yeah, I'm just winning. And you can't blame me for that. You can't blame me for Smash because I I hosted all three of them. So don't look at me. On the local level, I have to give a <laughs> I have to give a big shout out to uh, I think it's Every Damn Day and um, God, why am I forgetting his name? I have a bunch of, uh, Nightshade. Nightshade and Every Damn Day because they used to come to Hat when Hat and they still do every now and then randomly. Um, they come to Hat and they have their own little Pokemon set up. And people actually show up. Like maybe like it'll be like ten people or, or like six, but they still show up. So they're very dedicated. So yeah, shout out to, I know every damn day is from PG, and I know Nightshade is uh, from the AV. So shout outs to them because I know they're supporting their game a lot still. Also, Warchief, yeah. we can't see the stream. Yeah, give us the stream, Warchief. You're not screen sharing. At least on. At least on. Uh, the, the, there we the go. Yes, old, release us. The yield of Discord. Alright, we'll be back. Let's get this, let's wrap up the tournament. How does that sound? We got a, a few more matches to go. And we have Gay over to J2. JTJ, uh, who has gone back to his Mario. Kind of disappointed. I wanted to see more of his Lucina. Uh, but I guess he does want to be able to box Gay with a, a little bit of a faster character. And Mario's going to be able to do that. Mario versus Mario is very good for Mario, even in 4, even in this game, but definitely. But it has swords, but they're not they're not as disjointed as you would want them to be, especially against Mario. Like if, you, if you're fighting Mario, you better have that Shulk range, that Lucina range, because if you don't have that, Mario will just get in no matter what, and Pit swords are not in that range. They come close though, but not enough. Also, if it's fall speed, it is good for Mario combos. Ah, nice. Went for the back air. Oh, he's trying to go for some. I like it. This is, this is the Gale. Like, he's, he's trying to keep up pressure. He sees that JCJ is at 144. Nice. He was able to land with Guardian Orbitars and then punish after the downer. Because there is some cooldown. Yeah, but as you can see, Gayo continues to fight back, pushing JTJ off. JTJ, JTJ is continues to fight back. Look at that fair string. All right, Nair into us smash now. It's almost like complete reversal as uh, Mario had retaken stage control for a bit. Now Gayo has it back once again. I like how Gale's like trying to utilize his short hops, but just hope he doesn't forget that Mario has like amazing anti-air tools. So hovering right above them, not exactly the best idea uh, at like higher percents such as he's at. But catching with an amazing up smash, that newly buffed up smash that really can be difficult to fall out of, showing that it works. So yeah, yeah keep using that new busted tool. Yeah, I think Gale is doing a really good job to put the matchup. Like, I think it's definitely still very much a Mario matchup, but Gale is doing an excellent job with Guardian Orbitars, and that's what got him that up smash punish. If he had not done that, yeah, JTJ would be up a smash. Alright, oh, man, you can't just do that on shields, bro. This ain't this ain't four. Getting another and, rapid jab. This time, getting stuck in the corner, so attacking on a little bit of extra damage. Nice back air. Yeah. Oh, good. That was good. That was good. In case uh, the way that Gale was out of position, it would have caught neutral get up, normal uh, neutral get up, roll got up. Uh, so that was good. And the way that JTJ was playing, really, really good stuff. Yeah, I'm really impressed that JTJ had the uh, stage awareness or the matchup awareness to throw out attacks while recovering. <laughs> yeah. You know, man, he's just happy to be alive. I'm not yeah, gonna you, lie. You, you don't see Pit win, that's why. Yeah, that's true, that is true, man. I'm probably in the minority, but I hope that we get a sequel or like a remaster of Kid Icarus Uprising. That was actually a really good game with a terrible control scheme, but it was a really good game. <laughs> yeah. I think you are on a lonely island there. Vance. Yeah, dude. It had like I was a I'm a lefty, so like when Sakura was like, "Oh yeah, you can get a C stick attachment, but you can't use the other stick as an actual control scheme." And I was like, "This defeats the purpose." So much. Oh, 
another character switch from JTJ. Uh, this is a matchup. Did we see um, it earlier in the day? No, we see we saw Kale, but we did not see uh, Gale versus JTJ. It was against, yeah, it was K Rule versus Bayo. I'll, I'll get some from Gale. He's doing a really good job of spacing out in there. Um, you have to against Carol. He can definitely go for a grab and get armor through through neutral air if you don't cross him up. Uh, this, uh, yeah, it's it's tough. If if you're a mashy Carol, you can get away with a lot because of armor, but it all depends on what options you're mashing. JTJ okay. definitely likes to mash. We've yeah. seen it just about all three of his characters so far. Down throw. Read the react. Uh, that was good for up tilt. I would have preferred if he would like a red one for neutral air, just because he could actually catch the jump, and also if he doesn't go for the jump, he can still catch it up. That's what I see some K-Rolls do. Whoa! That was good, that was right, good. That he was like even approaching that. I don't know, whenever I see someone like approaching a charged mass attack, I just get, I don't know, I get nervous every time. Yeah. Same for Gale, he wasn't too scared, just because he knows, like, I can jump around it. Oh, yeah, start up frames. I'm still that's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Check his chin and get him out of here. Yeah, for pet things like things like um which I think should have been buffed. Things like upper dash arm. Uh oh. Bro. No, he's good, he's good, he's good. He's good. Oh, okay. Him, I was no, I was I was actually trying to see if JTJ was gonna set up for a back air. Actually what he should have done is throw it <laughs> throw pit the other direction, because you can still do that while you're in the air. Yeah, that's that. Wow. I'm Jump telling you, if, if, if you... <laughs> In... Okay, good to know you can't fall out of that anymore. Yeah. Or maybe he's just a big, big boy. Yeah, in this matchup, like I said, if you're K-Roll against Pit, you can just mash. And as long as you have an option with the belly, you'll be fine. Oh, it's, it's, even though it has now to shield, it's like, that's... Relatively only good option, and that can only go so far for so long. After that, you just begin to not necessarily fall out, but it's just a nair. It's not. It's, it's not a combo ender or tool at higher percentages. You just get hit by it. Yeah, speaking of nair, JCJ is using it as a combo breaker for all Gao's uh, aggression sharking. Down air, up air. Oh, yep. orbiters for the save. Oh, I would have loved it if they had gone for a grab. Good one. He went for an opportunity. We could also get a cross up from there too as well. Down smash. Yep. Stop the approach. Close. He got clipped by it. Good down smash. I think a one upper one, the opportunity he gets an upper dash arm would be really good against K roll because you can actually contest that armor with your own. Yep. He can survive. I respect that from Gale. He wanted to stop him from the recovery. Yeah, you gotta remember, like, all these trades that are occurring between these two players, they're all going in, in JTJ's favor. Yeah. He's up a full stock. Definitely. And, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Carol has the best recovery out of all the heavies. It's, bas it's legit basically, um... It, it's basically, uh, what is it, a uh, villager recovery. <laughs> but yeah, the K roll will bring the score 1 1. Another unexpected character from JTJ. I wonder who else he has in his arsenal. Yeah. I were. Okay, Going Palu or. I know he has a show going Palu or Shulk or Hero is a good choice. Against K Rule? Yeah. Palu. Shulk. Hero. Once you want to turn on Bounce, what's K Rule gonna do? You can read his, his frame data, is as bad as yours. Slightly worse. Looks like we're going Dark Pit. Yeah, the upper dash arm is different. I'd exchange it to electroshock arm, but also the arrow has um, the the arrow has different uh, knockback properties, so it'll be good to like stop Kale in his tracks. Think of it like Fox and Falco laser, basically for track pit and pit. Which, in my opinion, is like 
Uh, I'm sad it's the only change. Wow, that back air was strong enough to break the Orbitars. I mean, have you seen, like, how early it kills? Kinda makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think after you break the Orbitars, they're not active for about five seconds, and then you get them back. Oh, dropping shield just a little too early. AGJ gets sent off stage, but Gayo not able to capitalize shoot while, while shooting his, uh, his arrows. What? We never see that move. <laughs> it, uh, it, the only reason why Gayo wasn't able to connect it is just... He was too close to the ground. Hey, he had been a little bit higher, he would have gone to the up smash. Fourth throw? Smash. Oh, good change, good change. And the DI mix up. Anybody who's anybody would have been DIing away for the fourth throw. Because you can die from it. This match is basically a slobber knocker. Like, it's literally you, he who mashes better wins. But also with punishing, with punishing heroes in the trick. Yeah, trying to challenge the recovery. I mean, Pit with this linear recovery, it'd be very easy to uh, hit him out of it if uh, if you're able to land, throw your attack out at the correct time. It just the pesky part, the hardest part is like the the stall, of course. Oh, that was close. He wanted to hit him with Nair when he was in the deep. That's the hardest thing about punishing K. Roll too. Is like he, he literally gets to basically recover for free. Because he can go off the deep. Uh -oh. Oh, uh oh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. He can still nice recover. Fine. I'm telling you, man. He basically gets to recover for free. Yeah, fourth throw will kill. You know, like I say for free. Still got to work for it a little bit. You just press up B, and the up B has a hitbox above you, in which if your opponent tries to spike you, they get hit instead. That You have to have a disjoint. I think only, like, you have to have a significant disjoint. That's what I'm saying, like, you don't have a sword, then... Oh, God. If you don't have a sword, then yeah, you, you ain't doing much. In my case, I just throw Link Dare or Link Bomb, and then I tell Kaylo to make a move. Now go F tilt connects. Wait for it? Yeah. Okay. Good tech. And Gayo is approaching the percents where he's gonna be untackable, but up tilt. Another swing. I swing. didn't like Popper that, cut. yeah. He should have gone for um an electroshock arm, or at least gone back to the ledge. Just because of the way that like JTJ loves to be aggressive there, electroshock arm would have given him armor, would have hit him at the same time. Back air, yeah. I would have loved the grab though. I think that's what Gayo used to do sometimes, is not be afraid of just going for grabs at the ledge. Even if it's not a kill or a combo, just go for the grab. Yeah, armor. See how I'm saying, man? It's just a slobber knocker from here on out. All up until Gale can find a percent lead and then get a whip punish. I mean, he's had the percent lead for this entire stock. Yeah. Just JTJ slowly working his way back, but the mm. up smash, huge anti-air to beat out the falling there. Armor's not enough to keep JTJ in the game. Uh, and that'll put Gale up 2-1. That was good too, because the way he had gone for up smash was facing away from K. Roll. And anybody who's anybody knows, K. Roll only gets armor as long as the belly is facing in that direction. So behind K. Roll, he will never receive armor. So good stuff to Gale. But like I said, I think I think Gale would have an easier time. Sometimes he just went for grabs. Even if it's back throw and he does not gonna kill, you have your opponent off stage. That gives you stage control, that gives you edge guards, that gives you opportunities to read. Frustrate your opponent. It is always worth it. Yeah, but I'm curious to see. Okay, so no character switch from JTJ. That's what I was really like curious about. If maybe Lucina was gonna come out. Mm. JTJ did sort of pretty solid, but I actually think in this scenario, yeah, Lucina. Probably be a solid choice. Uh, both pits have a difficult time against swords. They do pretty decently, but against Lucina, it's tough. Trying to get a little bit of extra damage, but 
JTJ able to make it back and escape with the crown interrupting Gao. But Gao does not care. Wow. Oh, section two. Oh. If he had for the crown, if he had for the crown, not enough. Not in time. Yeah, another nice. nice flash connected for Gao. Reuse the armor, make sure that JTJ gets back to the ground safely. Oh, not able to scoop him up with the wind, though. That was good. That was good. That was so good. He waited for the Nair to end, and he went for forward smash. And as soon as Nair ends, the armor ends. He only has that armor if he's active on moves. Another F tilt. DTJ slowly putting damage on to Gao. Yeah. Gao's doing fine. He's not panicking. He's not doing an excellent job. He knows Garden Orbitars literally do half of the defense work for me, especially when I'm off stage. Yeah, that was tough. Uh, yeah, see what I'm saying? He gets off stage, man. He just throws you just throw those Garden Orbitars and you have nothing to worry about, even if you break them. Hero has to go for like a downer or directly above you, and even then, then he doesn't have the greatest jump height. I mean, yeah, I think smash. even at that point, I would just let... I would force... Like, you should really be forcing Gayo to, to recover low, and then using the Nair to just continue to apply pressure and even extend the damage. Yeah. Because that's almost guaranteed if you cover the ledge with, with Nair. Gale, you should have gone for crowd. It was open. Yeah, he's waiting. He's waiting. He knows. He knows. He knows that JTJ wants Gale to make that mistake of trying to overcome back to the center stage and then get punished for it. I think he's really looking for, for a neutral getup at the ledge so he can S smash or down smash. Well, we have a max rage. That's Ooh, it. okay. It, yeah. Had a max rage K rule. Forward tilt? I'm sorry, I'll tilt. My bad. Okay, he's good. I don't know why I panicked there myself, man. It's because I want to watch the kid win again. Nice. Looking for with punish range here. Careful with that forward air. It's got a disjoint. Deceptive range. Good neutral air. Wow, the fastball was so scary for JTJ. He almost fell into the blast zone, but another drop kick landing onto Gayo. That's fine. Oh, be careful, yeah. That's the, that's the sour spot of, of Smash. Okay, running off and nearing. It's just a little bit too late. Even though I hate Carol, I do like how him and Incineroar are kind of like quote unquote the grappler sumo wrestler characters. And I love that they both show it. But their moves, especially. That was funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> you could just see JTJ wanted that approach there. An upper dash arm will cover him for going for a run in. I respect the option, but he's going to probably win it at the ledge. And that's probably a really great victory screen. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just felt like JTJ was a little bit too focused on getting the kill. You saw him kind of make the same mistakes or the same pick the same options uh, trying to close out Gao stock uh, in a row. Like, I think he ran in and tried to dash attack like two or three times. And the interaction was almost exactly the same every time. It was just dash back, um, dash back, and then more arrow. And then when he tries to recover, arrow. Platform, arrow, landing arrow, dash back, <laughs> dash back. So, I don't know. I feel like JTJ just was maybe tunnel visioning. And that's why, that's really what allowed Gayo to just rinse and repeat his way in, into winners or losers finals. Hey, thanks for the love, uh, Gatsby. Let's see, yeah, Dark Pit is like the Shadow Hedgehog of Kid Icarus. Yeah. It, it's like, it's, I never, so I never played the, the Kid Icarus games, except oh, for the first one. You. I played the first one. Uh, but oh, was like Metroid? The what? The 2D one that was like Metroid? The one that was on like the original Game Boy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, of uh, Kid Icarus of Monsters or something like that, yeah. Yeah. So, in like the new one, is Dark Pit like a, an antagonist or is it like an anti-hero? He is an anti-hero and he is the very opposite of Pit. His creation it happens because... <laughs> Long story short, um, Pit tries to stop Pandora from and, and her mirror, but when he tries to stop and break the mirror, the mirror creates Dark Pit as Pit tries to stop it and therefore Dark Pit is born. Um, he's not that edgy. He's actually like very like out for his own stuff. Yeah, and uh, Myths and Monsters is the second iteration. I think it was the Game Boy one. And there was there was Kid Icarus for the Nintendo, and then there was of uh, yeah Myths and Monsters for the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy. But yeah, Dark Pit, Dark Pit basically gets created because Pit tried to destroy a mirror that creates an opposite of everything, and Dark Pit he, he un- unintentionally unleashes Dark Pit. It was a pretty cool scene. Yeah, yeah forget that game. Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters. That game was too hard. That's why I tell people I love Kid Icarus Uprising. I, it's, it had a terrible control scheme. I was kind of like Star Fox, but that game was really cool. And I wish it got a re- I wish it gets a remake or a remaster or whatever. Because it was really dope. I think it, I think a lot of people would enjoy that approach. 